VMware Explore 2024 is taking place. Let's see what the announcements are. First up, VMware Tech Showcase. The kit's just announced a new initiative at VMware, the Tech Showcase. What is this? What's it going to do? How should we consume it? We're going to cover that over the next couple of minutes. So the first thing is, what is it? It's ultimately a new program for customers and partners of VMware to take advantage of, to get access to the latest technology and then ensure that we can provide relevant feedback to VMware before it becomes productized. What does that mean to us as a customer or a partner? We get to try before we buy. We get to have a bit of a trial before we plan on any investment. It also means we can provide direct feedback to the VMware ecosystem, ensuring that the products that are launched have the right messaging, but also are hitting the right mark on how we're going to consume that technology, which means when VMware decides to commercialize that product, it has the relevant SKUs and bundles and packages, which then means we can buy it in the way that we are consuming it rather than in the way that VMware believe we may be consuming it. So us providing that feedback as partners and customers is going to be really, really powerful. Now, if we think about what's in it for them, it's going to be great, right? They get telemetry, they get data, they get insights. They're going to get all this information that allow them to tailor the product to what the customer wants. And ultimately, they're a product company selling technology to customers. So it's a gold mine for them at that point. Now, if we have a think about why they would be doing this, it's mainly the data the telemetry they're going to get to be able to take advantage of. If you go to the vmware.com forward slash showcase website, you'll be able to see the FAQs and what kind of data they're going to be expecting and how you provide feedback. But more importantly, this is not a, a community program. It's not a, a, an engagement methodology. What you're going to do is you're going to go and contribute to a project, a bit like you would do on GitHub in some cases. You're going to go into vmware.com forward slash showcase. You're going to choose a project that you're most interested in, and then you're going to work on that project. And contributing is as easy as one, two, three. One, go to the website, vmware.com forward slash showcase, and choose the project that most interests you and your business. And two, install it, right? Get it rolled out, get it tested, hopefully in a test and dev environment rather than production straight away. And thirdly, provide feedback to VMware. Feedback on the documentation that's available, feedback on the product performance, feedback on how it's providing you the information you're expecting from them so that when that product comes to market, it's as relevant as it can be. It's as easy as that, one, two, three. We're all aware that there's a couple of other programs within VMware. So there's VMware Flings, there's Hands On Labs. Showcase sits right at the beginning in front of those. And why is that? VMware Showcase, Tech Showcase, is ultimately early access program to the products that they need your assistance on that are backed by the business units. And that's the most key thing here to listen to. It's backed by the VMware business units. If we think about the Flings program and community, it's fantastic, right? We're creating really cool technology and bolt-ons to the ecosystem of VMware, but it's not supported by VMware business units in a lot of cases. If we think about hands-on labs, it's about how do we take advantage of a technology and learn about a technology but it's only on the ones that they've already made available for you to buy. So think about Tech Showcase as a way of getting access to this technology to be ready to consume it when it comes to market as well. Now, VMware are launching two initial projects within this uh, Tech Showcase. Number one, Project Keswick. Ultimately, Project Keswick is a way of managing your Ed devices with a GitOps approach. How do we automate? How do we respond? How do we get state configuration? How do we do all these things at mass across an edge estate? Project two is Project Trinidad. Now, Project Trinidad is uh, the way that we can secure our modern applications. Think about it as um, initially a, a MLAI based view of your API services and the API gateways they're consuming. And I'm going to show you to the website in a second where you'll be able to see what's involved when you're deploying some of these things. But most importantly, it's about protecting your environment from zero day attacks. Now, what will come next from here? Well, from what I've been told, we're going to get access to more and more of these projects that VMware are working on. And from my perspective, and from what I've been told so far, they're going to be very much focused on AI and ML workloads. Hey, everyone's doing it right now. If OpenAI and ChatGPT hasn't done something, it's accelerated in an AI conversation, that is for sure.
So let's go and have a look at what's available on the VMware.com forward slash showcase site. Now, this is before release, so some of this may change between now and when you go to this website. Cool, so we can see here I've gone to the VMware.com forward slash showcase site, and it's taken me to here. And you can see you can become part of the vibrant innovation community. Ultimately, what this is gonna give you access to is the two projects I mentioned earlier, as well as access to all of the documentation and FAQs that you might want to go and read to make sure you know what you're signing up for. Now, if we go to FAQs, you can kind of see what's happening, what it's here for, what's the services, will you be charged, will you, and ultimately it's free, right? So you don't have to pay for it. Um, what happens if you don't wanna give feedback? Well, ultimately, if you don't give feedback, you will get removed access to the program ultimately, right? This is about you provide feedback for the access you get given. Uh, what happens if the service no longer offered in showcase? Well, then guess what? You'll be informed 30 days in advance and they'll be removed. Right? This is not a live productized service. So again, you may want to take some of this into a test dev environment. There's loads of FAQs in there. I'm sure they'll get built more and more over time and get moved to an eDoc site. Resources is empty. Now, I am here a day or so before release or notification that this is going to be uh, launched. Um, so this will take you to the eDoc site. Now, if I scroll down, I can see the two projects. We've got nice little videos around what each project is. Uh, ultimately, Project Keswick is about how do we orchestrate and manage our edge, right? Um, allowing us to provide any workload in any location. And the thing about Project Trinidad is basically how do we basically analyze the behavior of our API traffic against generative AI cyber attacks um, and more, right? Which you'll start to see as it starts to get developed over time. Um, now you can watch those videos if you want to. I'm not going to play them now, but let's just have a bit of fun, right? So let's just see whether this is actually up and running yet because, like I said, this is currently the 21st of August at 10.16 at night. Um, so let's see what happens when I click on Project Trinidad because that'd be quite interesting to see. So cool, it's single signed me in with some cash credential, which is great news. Um, now I work for a partner, CDW, which means that it's used those credentials to get access uh, because otherwise I wouldn't have access. Um, and I can see there's some prerequisites I can go and look at. Now Project Trinidad is about looking at those API um, traffic flows. So this would be generally for a Kubernetes cluster, right? Now, if we look at that, some prerequisites, you need a KH cluster, you need to know how to deploy it, you need to know what some of the information is in there. But ultimately, once you get your prereqs in place by clicking on that link, download your sensor, import your sensor into the environment, install it using these commands, right? Now, make sure you understand what these commands are before you run them. You may want to go and look at what the YAML file has in there as well. Just make sure you're really, really happy with what's in there. And then once it's done, it'll report back and you can start exploring. And some of your traffic will then be visible within the Trinidad platform. Uh, again, more documentation, installation videos, all that kind of stuff. So there's lots of things in here to help you get this up and running. Uh, because again, this is not a live platform and something you can raise a support request for. Now, if we're thinking about support, you can offer feedback at the top. So this is the reason VMware are doing this. Give me feedback. Okay, click feedback and you say, yes, you like it. No, you don't want these changing, right? Do you need some help? Click on help and it'll take you to a help portal where you can go into a chat and, and, and enter some uh, support information. And same again with support. You can look for answers again, and if you can't find them, use a little help button at the top and it will take you a step further. So that's Pr Project Trinidad by the looks of it at a high level. Now I can't go and install it anywhere because I haven't got my test environment up and running with the KH cluster at quarter past 10 in the evening, and I don't really want to do it either at this moment in time. Um, but what I will do is get this set up and have a little bit of a play and provide a second video for you all to see. Um, but yeah, that's where it's at this moment in time. I think there's gonna be some really good stuff on here for us to get our heads into. Um, and I think it's a really great initiative allowing the tech community partners and customers to start playing with this innovative technology.